This tutorial is also from the class of April 7th, 2018, and this is the one which shows you how to make a kaleidoscope. I left it till I'd done some of the others because it has more steps to it and perhaps will take you a little while to learn how to get to the tools, but I encourage you to stick with it. My tutorial tells you exactly what every step is, and once you make one, it's easier to make more. It's like all things we learn. When we practice, it becomes easier. So for this one, I am going to uh, go, and I think in this tutorial, since I'm making it fresh, <clears throat> I'm going to use the image which is in the tutorial. Maybe easier for you to refer to. So go to File, Open, and uh, if you go to Tutorial Examples. We're still in the folder called Creative Image Examples, and it's found in the April 7th, 2018 folder. And if you click open the Tutorial Examples, you will find uh, one that's called Machu Picchu MP. That's the one uh, that is I'm going to use. And there are three examples in this tutorial. I've given you the images for all three. But the one we're going to work with is Machu Picchu, MP. And uh, you see, I've given you the final finished one to look at. So you could see what it looks like. But if you have my handout, you already saw what it's going to look like. But realize, if I don't start with exactly the same sample, it will look a little different. So we're going to open MP8737. JPEG. And that's the one is the original image and click open. So when you get go to do a kaleidoscope, you are going to choose a small part of a total image. And so what matters is where is there some interesting graphic elements, some contrasts, some color changes. So you want to choose an image which has good contrast and interesting graphic elements, and this one really does. And so you want it, it says here to be sure the foreground background colors on the toolbox have white as the background. So here are the foreground background. If yours are reversed or messed up, you can first of all click the little black and white squares to get the default. And if you have the white on top, you use the bent arrows to put them back so that the white is on the bottom. There are lots of ways of changing this, but we're going to follow it the way it is suggested in mine. It also says that it's helpful if you have a ruler visible. You see my ruler across here? That's an option in the View menu, and I've clicked on Rulers. When you're doing something like this, sometimes it's helpful to be able to know what the midpoint in your file is. So I'm recommending that you turn on your rulers. <clears throat> and that comments that consider the size of your file. If you end up with a file with 5,000 pixels on the long side, you're going to end up with an absolutely huge final file. <clears throat> the only time I might do that is if I was planning to print a huge print of this then I might want to keep everything as big as possible. But I do more often I am going to be projecting it or putting it up on a website where it doesn't have to be. So I had suggested that um, you could resample it and make 1,500 pixels on the longest side. That would give you plenty of side to build this. But again, if you plan to print it, then you might want to have a huge file to deal with, in which case you could leave it with lots of pixels. Um, now we're going to duplicate the background layer, Command or Control J, so you have both layers there. And um, we're going to uh, get the original layer, the background. I, in a previous one, taught you how it's easier to fill this with black without going through this procedure. But because I gave it to you, I'm going to show you how to do it this way. But remember, if you want to fill the background with black, the easiest way is the way we did before, which is Edit Fill, 
and click on black as a color and OK it, it's filled. But this is the way I described it. It's another way uh, to do it. OK, so we have to be on the original background layer. And we go to Ed Edit Fill, which is what we did before. Edit Fill Layer. And because I want it to be white, if I choose from the Use folder, if I choose Background Color, I will get white, won't I? But we also know if you forgot to change that and your background color is black, you can choose white. Either way, you will end up filling the background layer with white. So it isn't necessary, but since my background color is white, I can do it that way. And so I now have white. And for this project, uh, we want to have white as the background. It gives us a bit of flexibility. First of all, it's easier to see what we're doing on a white background. And when you're done, you can change the background color to anything you wish, but you'll find it easier to work with uh, the white. So now you're going to click on the layer that is your image, which is the top layer. And we're going to use the crop tool like we did before. And we're going to select an area to be used for the kaleidoscope. And uh, we're going to start with a um, cropping it with a vertical rectangle. I find it gives us a rather interesting, sizable kaleidoscope. There's no reason you can't, on some images, uh, go ahead and use a horizontal. But we're going to use this. And using a crop tool, not the uh, the, not the um, marquee tool. Using the crop tool, uh, and we are going to have no restrictions on the side. So you can either delete the numbers in the width and the height, or in elements you can say no restriction, it does it for you. So it enables you, and you know I already don't like the fact that they start suggesting crops. It's useless for this guy. So I simply, in elements, will hit the red cancel mark. I still have my crop tool. And I've decided that I would like to grab a little section that includes some clouds, some blue sky, and some little angle on the steps here. I thought that might make an interesting design. You could use anything. But I would encourage you to have some blue sky and clouds because it will make it a much more beautiful final image. So I'm going to come up and take uh, something up above here where I get some sky, some clouds. I'm going to make a rectangle that's vertical. And of course, the nice thing about this tool is that I can go and move it around. So I've, if I think I've got too much of the blue up there, I move it down. If I think it's got too much at the bottom, I can take the edge and, and reshape it or move it out. So I have a lot of flexibility. The only thing I want to think about is the graphic elements that are in my little rectangle. So I've chosen blue sky, puffy clouds. I like this little white sun shining on the rock. And I like the lines where the sun picked up the edge of the steps. So anything you do will work. You just make your choice. And then we go click and choose that. We now have a very small piece. And if you want to see it bigger, you may make it fit the screen. Remember, view menu, fit on screen, control or command zero, same thing. So you get to see it a little better. So this is the piece I chose. Now, the next job we have is to rotate this piece. And once again, what you learned in mandalas applies here. The smaller the angle, the more times you will have to repeat this process before your kaleidoscope is done. So when I taught it in class, I had us just do 45 degrees. It makes a very simple mandala, simple kaleidoscope. And in the handout, I showed you the, how they look like with different degrees, but we're going to make it simple and not as long for this. So we're going to choose 45 degrees. 
which is the example I gave in my handout. So how do we do this? We want to rotate this layer. We do not want to rotate the entire image. So here's where you might have some different things to deal with. If you are in Elements, your rotate part is under image. It's called rotate. And I believe in all the versions of a full Photoshop, there is also a rotate command. It's not plain rotate, but you will find a rotate command here. Our next job is to rotate our image. And we want to rotate the entire image whatever degree we're using. And I've said I'm going to use 45 degrees. So the way we find it is we have to go to the uh, image menu and we're rotating the entire image. So under the top part of this rotate, you will find a custom setting. And you should find the same in the rotate under image in full Photoshop. This enables me to choose a degree which is not given. So I hit custom. And I've said we are going to make it a 45 degree rotation. And uh, depending on your image, you could rotate it either left or right uh, and decide which you prefer. For our example, we're going to choose the rotation left of 45 degrees. And once we click OK, the entire image rotates. And it's bigger than my screen, so I always go back to the View Fit on Screen, which is Controller Command 0, to get it back where I can see it. And in this case, I have to decide what is going to be the piece I'm going to use. We do not use the whole rectangle. And because I chose 45 degrees, I want you to visualize. We got quite a large rotation. So for this simpler one, we are going to end up with a, a equilateral triangle. We're not going to have a long, nice, skinny triangle. But I want you to think, if you rotated less than 45, your image on the screen is going to be closer to vertical, and you will end up having an elongated piece to use. And you can watch that in my little uh, paper handout. But we wanted to make this a manageable task. So what we're going to do is crop a triangle out of this. And the way we do it is quite easy, because the rules that I give say, look at the left side. Or if I had gone right, I would look at the right side. And I want to say, what is the second point from the left that I have? Well, the first point is this one. And the second point is this one. So it says my piece is going to start at that point. And I'm going to remove the triangle that's to the left of that point. I mean, I'm going to use that triangle. So what I need is not the crop tool, but the rectangular marquee. So I last used my marquee. It was elliptical. So I have to go back and choose the rectangular marquee. And I want to remove everything on the right side of this image and just keep the triangle. So I'm going to start my marquee up at that second point. I'm going to hold my mouse button. I'm going to go to the right and down to the corner till I've chosen the remaining part of the image and I'm going to remove it. And I want to remind you, because the angle is 45, I lost a lot of the detail in this image. If I had made a sh smaller angle, I could keep a lot of the rest of the detail. But for our purpose, the procedure is the same. The resulting kaleidoscope is dependent upon the angle of rotation and the piece that you started with. So since I have selected what I want to get rid of, if I go and choose the Delete key on a Mac or the Backspace key on Windows, and I click it, it deletes the part that I selected. And I'm left with a little triangle. This is the basis of my entire kaleidoscope. And so you'll notice I still have graphic changes, don't I? I do have some darks and some whites and some blues, but it will look different if I end up at another time making a small angle and keeping a skinny triangle, then I'll have more of my original image visible. So once we've done that, we need to get rid of all these crawling ants. 
So you can go to select, deselect, or control or command D from the keyboard. And this is the beginning of our uh, kaleidoscope. But we need a larger document to work on. And this time, we're going to enlarge it a little differently. But we always have to get to the resize canvas size. So if you'll go to the image menu and you're looking for canvas size, in elements, you go through the doorway of resize to get to canvas size. In full Photoshop, image canvas size is directly available. Click on it. And the way that I have in my direction says, if you will take the longest dimension, in this case they're identical, and double it, which will make this three inches, and make both the width and the height three inches. So I'm changing three to the, to the width and three to the height. And I want to use the anchor point in the middle. It'll make it equally expand in all directions. But look at my extension color. No way do I want to make the extension black. So I simply pop it open and choose white. Or I could choose background color, couldn't I? Because the white is my background color. As long as you make it white, you'll have the results you want. Click OK. And then again, I want to see my full image. So I can go to View, Fit on Screen, or Control or Command Zero. Whether you're a mouse person or a keyboard person, you'll use one or the other. And now, to start this kaleidoscope, we need to move our piece up to the center at the top. Now, it doesn't have to be precise to the tenth of an inch or something. But it helps to know where the middle is. So when you have a ruler, you know what the middle is. How do I move it? I have to be on the layer with the shape. I go and get the Move tool. And I simply grab my image and move it up to approximately the middle point and leave a little gap above it. You don't want to be touching the edge of the image. Somewhere in the center top is all you need to do to make this work. So once you've done that, and you don't want to see that move box anymore, all you do is if you change to the zoom tool, you don't see it. If it bothers you to see those little points around there, but it doesn't matter. We're going to be using them anyway. So this is how we proceed. We are going to copy this layer, Command or Control J, and then the upper layer, we want to rotate it horizontally and bring it to touch this so we'll end up with a diamond shape from where we have a triangle now. So what do we do? Now becomes the time when we don't rotate the entire image. Instead, we are going to flip this layer horizontally. So you need to go back to where the layer can be flipped. And so I'm going to go up in Elements to Image Rotate. And if you can find Edit Transform in the full Photoshop, you will also be given all these things to do with layers. And we see Flip Layer Horizontal. That's what we said we wanted to do. If you choose it, that top layer is now facing the other way. And we want to make it fit into the original piece below it. So we need the Move tool again. And I encourage you to hold down the Shift key. So the only direction you're going to move it is to the right to match it. You don't want to get out of phase with the other layer. So I grab the layer that's selected, the top, hold the Shift key, move it over till I get close to where I think I'm touching. You cannot do this perfectly with your mouse button doing it. So get close to where it is, lift your hands, and notice you still have that piece outlined. It's still in the move control. The better way to make it perfect is to first enlarge it so you see it better. Grab the zoom tool, enlarge in so you can see it better. I don't need it quite that big. And now go back to the Move tool 
And don't try to move it by hand. Go to your keyboard to the arrow keys. I want to move it tiny bit at a time to the left till it meets the other piece. So I take the left arrow and I can do it until the white strip is all gone. And because I zoomed in, I'm at 100%. I am going to be able to exactly match them up. If you were down at 25%, you might think it matched perfectly. And when you zoomed in, it either might be not far enough or too far. So it's important at this stage, you must be very fussy. If you're not sure, take the right arrow. Oops, you see how I got a gap back? Take a left arrow. The gap is gone. I've merged them correctly. So at this point, I am ready to take the layer that I just moved into the right position. And that one layer, I'm going to merge down onto the other part. So my new shape is all on one layer. How do I do that? Be sure the top layer is selected. And now go to the Layer menu. And near the bottom, you see Merge Down. We don't use that very often. That says the layer that is selected will be moved down to the layer below it. That's what we want to do. Click Merge Down. And now you've simplified your job because you now have one layer with the new shape. And you'll see why this is important in a minute. Because we want to make a copy of this layer and flip it vertically so that we end up having the triangles touch in the middle. So how do we do it? Copy the layer. Command or Control J. And now the top layer needs to be flipped vertically. Remember, just the layer. So we're going to do what we did before. In Elements, we're going to go to the Image Rotate, and you're going to get to the Edit Transform if you're on full Photoshop. And you're going to come down where it says Flip Layer Vertical and lift your finger. And they're on top of each other, so you know what's going to happen. We're going to move this top layer down till it matches up with the other layer. And so you're, you've got the Move tool. You need the Shift key, so you're going to go vertically only. Start dragging until you think you're just about right, but not perfect. And we're going to do what we did before. We're going to zoom in a little so we can see it closer. We're then going to go back to the Move tool. And we're moving the bottom one, and we want to move it till it touches the one above. And our mouse button won't do the job, but the vertical arrow will enable us. And if you're not sure whether you've brought them together, go over to the Zoom tool to get rid of the box. And if you think there's a little gap left, all that would do is leave a little white circle in the middle of your kaleidoscope. You could deliberately do that if you want. But if you think it's not quite perfectly touching, you go back to the Move tool and you raise it up one more click. And then get rid of the Move tool and look at it. And if you overlap a tiny bit, every piece you do from here on in is based on this design you've created. So it won't matter. It'll go together fine. But I just, I didn't want a white. If I wanted a white center, I wouldn't bring it all the way together. And then the center of my design would have a little white center in it. You know, maybe that'd be fun. How would I change my mind? I'd go back over to the Move tool, take the down arrow, and come down until I have a white between them. Can you see the little white between? That's going to be the center of my final image. So I need to see my entire image which is going to be Commander Control Zero or View Fit on Screen. And you know now, I bet you already know the next step. I don't want this design in two layers. I'm, now that I've got it set, I want one layer. So with the top layer chosen, I go to Layer and choose Merge Down. That one layer will be merged with the one below it and now my pattern is all on one layer. 
which makes it easier to work. And some of you have the visual eye for shapes. And you know, if I duplicate my layer <clears throat> and I rotate it to the right 90 degrees, this thing is going to fill up the gap and I'm going to have my kaleidoscope. So let's do it together. Copy the layer. So layer copy is Commander Control J. The top layer now needs to rotate all the way over 90 degrees in order to fill in the gap. And if you don't have that visual perception, you will find out, and my directions tell you, that it doesn't matter whether you rotate to the right or the left. It'll end up the same in appearance. So let's go to the top layer and let's go to that old place, rotate, flip, rotate layer, and you can't flip it any longer. You need to rotate it, and guess what? It gives you the 90 degrees, and I am telling you, doesn't matter, right or left, click the rotate layer, 90 degrees. And you know what? I have a bit of a gap in there. Well, let's be sure. Let's expand this to 100%. Oh, well, I made a mistake. Oh, oh no, I found out something. I gave you a mistake. I said if you left a gap in the middle, you'd have a hole in the middle. What I forgot is that gap in the middle causes everything to have a line. Well, sometimes in a tutorial, it might be better to correct a mistake than not to make it. So what I'm going to do is go to my history panel. And I know where I made my mistake. I can back up here. So step by step, I'm going to back up through each step that I did till I flipped it vertically. That was where I made, where I flipped it and moved it. That's where I made my mistake. So having backed up, if you haven't used the history panel, be sure it's available to you. It's very helpful. So what I'm going to do is correct my problem from before. I'm going to take that top layer, and I'm going to have the Move tool, and I'm going to hold the Shift key, and I'm going to move it down until it actually comes together. And if I'm not sure if it's together, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my arrow key and move it up, and if I'm not sure whether it's together, I'm going to get rid of the Move tool, go to my Zoom tool to be sure there is no gap there. I'm at 100%, but if I want to be doubly sure, I can keep zooming in on this till I see that definitely there is a connection in the middle. There's no white gap. And then I can fit screen. View, fit on screen. And now I'm ready to merge that layer down. So I go layer, merge down. I have a single layer. And now I'm going to repeat what I did. I'm going to copy the layer, Commander Control J. I want to rotate that layer 90 degrees. So we go back to the image rotate or wherever your rotate was found that you're used to it by now. And we are going to get the layer, rotate the layer right or left. And we have our um, simple kaleidoscope. And it's a very simple one because we chose 45 degrees and we didn't take us very long to make it. Once you understand the procedures you keep repeating, you can easily step from 45 to 30. 30 will have six sides. And then you can go from 30 to 15. Or I have chosen other ones in the directions the only thing that matters is that the angle is evenly divisible from 360. If you take a random number, you will have a lopsided image when you're done. So this, again, puts us like we were with the mandala. We're going to uh, merge everything together, except I don't want to merge the background immediately. I would like to consider changing its color. So what do I do? I merge down the top layer. If you are doing a smaller angle, you'll have many layers to merge. 
And the way to merge them, if you recall from the mandala directions, is to see that they have the eyeball clicked. You hide the background eyeball. Then if you merge visible layers, it'll only merge the ones where the eyeball is visible and you won't lose your background. But we don't have that problem. We have only two layers. Let's take the top layer and go layer, merge down. You now have your image and you have it with a separate background so you can change the color around it. But the next thing I'm gonna do is repeat cropping it into a square. Since it's based on a square shape, it will look best if its edges are the same. And if I want more space at the top, you'll remember that if I change the image canvas size and I add white to the top of the canvas, then I could allow more space. But I'm going to assume that's enough space around the edge. So I'm gonna go and grab the crop tool I'm going to make sure that I have the width, whatever number I put in the width, I put in the height. That'll guarantee it's a square. And then I'm going to come up here somewhere to the top, because I know I have to use the top. I don't have much gap. And I'm going to draw a square, and I can change it. Remember, when you crop, I can take this corner and come in, and I won't lose my square. If I see it's too much space on the bottom and right, I can move my crop box over till I think it's even. And if there's too much at the bottom, I can go and bring that in again to keep it square. And I can, if I can't get a square because there's not enough room at the top, I would have to go in and enlarge it, but I can. If I keep moving it around, I have a square that is equally distant from all four points. So I can either enter, return, or green check mark. I have an image which I can still work on. The first thing I could do is decide to change the background color. And to remind you, I like to choose a color that exists in the image so I know it will blend. What about putting one of the browns from the middle into the background? So what do I do? I have to be sure that that image layer is active. I come over to the eyedropper, which we call the color picker tool, and I say, what color do I want? I start somewhere. I'm going to start with maybe the middle shade of brown here. And it appears down in my foreground. And I decide if I like it. And if I'm not sure, I can easily change it. I'm going to use it, see if I like it. Where do I want to put that color? Not on my image. I want to put it on the background layer. So I click the background layer and I get that paint bucket. And what color does it use? The foreground color. And if I click anywhere in my image, the background color takes it up and it is ugly. So how do I do? I undo. You can undo from the edit menu or you could undo from Control or Command Z. And I think I'd like it better if it were really dark. I don't have to re-choose the color with the, the eyedropper. I can take this foreground, click on it, and the rule for this color picker is that if I go down from, this is the place I chose. If I go down, it gets darker. If I go up, it gets lighter. If I go to the right, it gets more saturated with color. And if I go to the left, it's less saturated. So if I go down and choose a darker color, it appears up here in the new area. I can keep clicking till I decide how dark is dark. And if I want more rich color, I simply will go to the right and click. That will add more saturation to the color I chose. And if I think that that's gonna work, I click OK. And now I go to the background layer and I take the paint bucket and I click again. And I like it better. But if it's still too light, you know, all I do is undo the last thing, which was the paint bucket. I come down to the foreground color. I go darker by going down below. I click OK. And I use the paint bucket on the bottom layer 
You've got to keep being sure that you're back on that background layer. And I click it again. And that might appeal to me more. Or the whole design maybe doesn't appeal to me and I would have to redo it. I can tell you, your designs get more intrigue in them when you have a smaller angle. When the angle is 45, you don't have as much choice exactly in what you're using. But that's the procedure. And while you're learning, it's kind of nice to only have to repeat it a few times. And then later on, you will learn that one of the changes that occurs when you get smaller angles is that there comes a point where uh, you can't get a rotation that is the right degree you want. So you free rotate until it fills in the gap. So you can rotate and duplicate until you finally are at the point where you can't duplicate any longer. Instead, you have to go and actually free rotate to fill in the gap. But in the directions that I've given, I've told you how to work with uh, angles that are uh, different and so that it enables you to figure that out. Um, and I do have some samples. And anytime you work on these, if you need more help than I've given, you are certainly welcome to email me at mlfrost at verizon.net and say, I'm getting in trouble when I have a, a small degree. How do I finally do this? And I will be glad to supply that extra information for you. So at this point, we're done with this part of the kaleidoscope. We are going to close the thing because it's just a sample for learning. Then don't save it. And you are ready to try it again on this using a different sample or get ready and use your own image.